your attention, please. Please do not smoke in the terminal building. Smoking is only permitted Two, mix equal parts diet cola and gasoline. Three, dissolve gasoline into kitty litter until the mixture is thick. Pardon me? Tyler Durden. You know why they have oxygen on airplanes? No. Supply oxygen? Oxygen gets you high. In a catastrophic emergency, we're taking giant panicked breaths. And yet we become docile and we accept our fate. Picture a emergency water landing 600 miles an hour. And yet blank faces as calm as Hindu cows. <laughs> What do you do, Tyler? What do you want me to do? I mean, uh, for a job. Why? So you can say, oh, that's what you're doing, be a smug little shit about it? <laughs> uh, um. You have kind of a sick desperation in your laugh. You have the same briefcase. Open it. Soap, the yardstick of civilization. I make and sell soap. If you were to add nitric acid to the soap making process, one would get nitroglycerin. With enough soap, one could blow up the world if one were so inclined. Tyler, you are by far the most interesting single serving person I've ever met. You see, when we travel, everything is small, self-contained, um, things, objects. Um, I get it. You're very clever. Thank you. How's that working out for you? What? Being clever. Well, great. Keep it up, then. Keep it right up. You're defined by the choices we make. How do you do with your job? Uh, by... By having sex with everybody in the office. Uh, and then, um, then people started getting into fights uh, in the parking lot at work, and also in the bathroom. Yeah, so, and the boss pulled me into his office and tried to pin it all on me. So I accused him of sexual harassment, and then they fired me. Sent me home and put me on some meds. Wow. <laughs> I, uh, I get it. Uh... The song that was playing when my wife was in the shower with the, uh, the history teacher. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, that was my wedding song. Uh, so I go kind of crazy when I hear it. Sometimes I hear it when it's not even playing. Wow. So I, I get it. Yeah. So I, I know. Yeah. I just got to get a strategy, you know? Me too. We should get back to the letter. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get to the letter. What if you told Nikki when Veronica was in the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Oh, I love that. Oh my god, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna finish writing the letter right now. Can I at least finish my tea first? Wait. What? My tea. Can I finish it? Wait a minute. Did Veronica tell Nikki about our dinner? Why would she do that? Was it a test? Kinda got that feeling, yeah. God damn it, I knew it. It was a test. How did I do? I think I did pretty well. Yeah, she said you were, you know, pretty cool, basically. Basically? Was I some percentage not cool? No, she said you were cool, but you know. No, I don't know. Just sort of how you are. It's fine. Relax. What do you mean, how I am? What does that mean? Sort of like me? Sort of like you? I hope to God she didn't tell Nikki that. Why? Because it's just not right lumping you and I together. I mean, it's just wrong. 
And, and Nikki wouldn't like that, especially after all the shit that you just told me. You think I'm crazier than you. Because, well, we're different. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Killing me. You know what? Forget I ever, ever offered to help. <laughs> Forget the whole fucking thing, because that must have just been fucking crazy, because I'm just so much crazier than you. Keep your voice down. <laughs> oh, I'm just the crazy slut with a dead husband. You know what? Forget it. Shut the fuck up. No, fuck you. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, I don't think you're crazy. Oh, yes, you do. Hey, Tiffany. Look, I don't think you're crazy, okay? Oh, yes, you do. No, I don't. You told your therapist that you were in a superior mental illness category, didn't you? What? That doesn't even matter. Just leave me alone. Can I just explain myself? I, I didn't want Nikki to think of me that way because I, I don't associate with that kind of, of sexual behavior. <laughs> you may not have experienced the shit that I did, oh, but you loved hearing about it, didn't you? You are afraid to be alive. You are afraid to live. You are a liar. You are a conformist. You're a hypocrite. I opened up to you and you judged me. You're an asshole. You're an asshole. I can't find them. They've got to be here somewhere. I couldn't have dropped them. Of course not. The, the last time I had them, I was studying in that tweed jacket. Yeah. The same one you had on yesterday. The same one you had on. You tossed it on the ground when you got that brilliant idea about hiding the body. He left them there like a calling card, didn't he, pussy? I didn't drop them. You picked up the jacket. You flipped it to me by the tail. That's when they fell out. I agree that it was a bad idea to leave them in there, but I didn't drop them. Oh. He agrees with us, pussy. It was all our fault. I agree that it was we a bad said, I agree that bomb. it was a bad decision, but I didn't drop them. We said, dump the body in the lake. But no, no. He had a stroke of genius, pussy. Dump the kid in the culvert, he said. Nobody's gonna find him in there. No, not in a million years. Artie, will you knock that shit off? Shut up. We're not talking to you. All right? The first guy, pussy, on his way to work, pulled that kid out of that stinking culvert. Why do you suppose he picked the culvert, pussy? Because he was scared. And that was the first place handy. What's that? Yeah. I think you're right. And you know what else I think? I think he never wanted to go through with it in the first place. No, Artie. You and I both agreed that it was the true test of a superior intellect. Oh, superior intellect. What do you think about that, puss puss? You and I, we work out this beautiful, perfect crumb. And then, and then the superior intellect goes and sees how many ways you can screw it up. I don't know how I could have been so stupid. You were. I'll, I'll go in and claim them tomorrow. I'll just say that I read about it in the newspaper. Mm-hmm. Do you live in the park a lot? Yeah, sure. I don't have to know when I lost them. Oh, you butch it up. As I say, Sergeant, I was at the park the other day with my students going bird watching, and it's just Bird watching, Steiner? With your students? What are you, some kind of nut or something? I happen to be an ornithologist, Sergeant, with special permission from the Department of Parks to take my classes on field trips. Oh, I see. And that's when you figured you lost your glasses, huh? It's possible. Oh, so, so that wouldn't happen to have been Wednesday afternoon around 6, would it? Oh, no, sir. I remember it particularly because 
a friend of mine and I were out on Lakeshore Drive and we ran into these two girls. Uh, I think their names were May and Edna. Betty and Edna, you fucking idiot. No, Artie, May and Edna. I know that's what they were. I know that, and I know that we were on Lakeshore Drive right by the aquarium. So what? What difference does it make? When you start remembering details like that, they just know it's an alibi. Yeah, but it's all we've got. Okay, like, suppose they do pick me up. You said that you would hold out for a week. You swore you would. Okay, I'll hold out for a week. One week. After that, I'll come up with my own alibi and stop worrying about it. It's not that easy to trace an ordinary pair of glasses. Suppose they do. What if it's more than a week? So what? They're not my glasses.